Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how you can really enhance the eyes in your photos by increasing contrast and sharpness. And I'm going to start right now. Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is James and if it is the very first time to this channel and you want to learn all about Photoshop, Lightroom and everything photography related, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. So today guys I'm going to run through how you can really enhance your eyes in your photos. Now I've already made a small video on this on how you can enhance portrait photography in Photoshop 2020. Uh, I'll put the link in the description, that was my previous video. So today guys, I'm going to be creating a mini series. So I'm going to be showing you today how to enhance the eyes and then in future videos I'm going to show you how to enhance lips and even skin. So in this video guys, I'm going to show you how you can really enhance the eyes by increasing contrast, by sharpening them and even changing the eye colour. Now guys, if you would like to follow along to any of the photos that I'll be using in this tutorial, go ahead to the link in the description. It will take you to my website, photographybyfever.com, where you can download all of the assets from there. But if you would like to use a photo of your choice, you're more than welcome to. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay guys, so the very first thing we want to do is work out what photo we want to enhance the eyes. So you want to make sure that the eye is prevalent in your photo so it's nice and large and hopefully if you choose an image that I've got or if you choose an image yourself, you want to make sure that it's very high quality because eyes are very difficult to uh, get, get in focus uh, and if they're out of focus, sometimes it can be an issue. So if you'd like to follow along to this tutorial, I've got three photos. So I've got uh, this photo here, number one, I've got photo number two, and I've got photo number three. And these photos are perfect for working on this particular technique. And then guys, you can obviously use a photo of your, of your own. But today guys, I'm going to be using photo one. So uh, all we have to do is uh, load it up in uh, Photoshop. So we've got photo one loaded up. And basically we want to work out what eye we want to work on first and then what we're going to do is duplicate everything onto the other eye. So I think what we're going to do today is we're going to work on the right eye first and then duplicate everything to the left. Now, first thing we want to do is we want to sharpen the eyes to make sure that they're nice and in focus. So at the moment I'd say they're like 99% in focus but they could do with just a little bit more sharpening. So what we want to do is go to our background layer here and we want to press Command J on our keyboard. And what that will do is that will duplicate the layer and we can add a new layer in. So we've done that like just like that. Then what we're going to do is we're just going to click it and we're just going to call it sharpen, like so. Perfect. So what we need to do now is we need to sharpen it. But first, we need to convert it into a smart object. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on that layer and then we're going to go down to convert to smart object. Now the reason that we're going to do this is because that means we can adjust any smart filters later on just in case we find it either too sharp or not sharp enough. So what we've done is once we've uh, changed that we're going to go up to uh, filter and we're going to go to other and then we're going to go to high pass. Now a high pass filter basically emphasizes edges and it will uh, be able to work using a blending mode. So we're going to have a look just to make sure we've got the right amount. So we just want to make sure we've got all of the areas we want sharpening. And I think around five pixels works for this particular image. But again, if you're using a different image, it might be a slightly different number. And then we're going to click OK. Perfect. But the image is all grey and it's not looking at all great. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to change the blending mode. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to normal and we're going to go change it to overlay. Lovely. And if we zoom into the eye, what we could do is we can do before and after. And as you can see, it's really sharpened this image up. But it's kind of affected the skin and it's not working too well on other parts of the image. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a layer mask of just the eye. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on our sharpen layer and make sure the sharpen layer is selected. And we're going to head down to our uh, layer mask selection here. And we're going to create a layer mask. Brilliant. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to paint where the eye is. So we're going to uh, just do that. Make sure we've got black selected. So we go to our foreground layer and make sure we've got it black as black is transparent and white is uh, opaque. We're just gonna make a nice soft brush. We're just going to, at the moment, just remove the sharpness from around where the eye is. 
just like so. And then again, we want to make sure we don't forget the other eye on the left hand side. So we're going to go along and do that. Brilliant. Okay, awesome. But now the eyes are all blurry and everything else is kind of in focus. So what we do is press Command I. And what that will do is it will invert the layer mask. So as you can see, if we go into our layer mask options by pressing Alt, as you can see, we've got the eyes selected in white and the background is in black. So as we've got that, and then we go click on here, as you can see before and after, sharpen the eyes up, lovely. So the next thing we want to do is we want to create a nice texture in the iris. So if we have a look at an eye, as you can see, we've got the middle bit, which is the pupil, which is the black section. And then we've got the outer section here, which is the iris. And this is the colorful part. So what we're going to do is we want to enhance the amount of texture in this particular area. So the best way I find of doing this is by using the curves adjustment layer and using the brush tool. So what we need to do is we need to go down to uh, our adjustment layer icon at the bottom right hand corner and we're going to go up and select curves. Now once we've selected curves we want to work out roughly what eye luminosity we've got. So we can use our drag tool so we're going to go click on this drag tool up here on the left hand side. We're just going to select any part of the iris and we're just going to bring it up and bring it up quite a lot, just like so. Perfect. And then what we need to do is we need to invert this like we did previously. So we want everything's white at the moment, so we want the layer mask to be black. So if we press Command I, that will invert the layer mask. So there we go, so it's turned off now. So what we want to do is zoom into the eye, we want to go quite close at this point, we want to get in, and we want to start drawing in uh, kind of uh, brush lines to add a certain amount of texture. So if we go to our brush tool, we want to make sure our uh, brush tool is nice and small, like so, and we've got nice and soft. We want to go up to our opacity, make sure our opacity is at 100%, and we're going to turn the flow down to around 20%. Lovely. We want to make sure our foreground colour is white, and then what we want to do is start drawing out from the centre, maybe put the brush a little bit smaller, just small lines, just adding in the texture. And because we've got the flow turned down, we want to make sure we draw it from the center. So just imagine you're drawing a line from the inside to the outside. So I'll just show you what I mean by that. So if we just choose a random color, say this is the center, and we want to draw around the edge here. We always want to make sure that we're drawing out like so. Uh, we want to make sure we're not drawing like this, or we're not drawing like this. We just want to make sure that we draw outwards, like so. Always make sure the line starts from the inside to the outside. So if we uh, keep on doing that, just along here. Brilliant. So once we've uh, drawn that, if you want to zoom out, and as you can see, we have added loads of texture to it. So if we were want to turn it off and then on again, as you can see, we have created a lovely amount of texture. But it's a little bit too strong. So what we can do is go into our curves adjustment layer. As you can see, we've got the point here, which is the luminosity point of where the eyes are. And we can just reduce it just ever so slightly, just to bring down the amount of texture. Lovely. So uh, we're happy with that. But obviously what we need to do now is we need to duplicate it onto the other side. So all we need to do is we just want to make sure our curves is selected. We want to press Command T, which is going to be our free transform tool. And we can just simply move that onto the other side. But we need to make sure that we've got a copy first. So if we just press Command J and then we press Command T again. And as you can see, we have moved all of that texture onto the other side. And then you could just use your arrow tools just to get it into the right spot. So we're going to do that. Lovely. So if we have a look and we just turn it off and on again, as you can see, we've added loads of texture to this image. Lovely. So the next thing we want to do is we want to colorize the iris area to a color of our choice. Now there are two ways of doing this and I'm going to show you both now. So the first way we're going to be using is the hue and saturation tool. So what we want to do is we want to zoom in again to the eye. We want to go down to our adjustment layers and we want to go and select hue and saturation. 
Now, as you can see, it pops up with this uh, icon here. We've got hue, saturation, and lightness. So if we move our hue tool here, as you can see, the eye is changing color, but everything else is changing color as well. So what we need to do is we're going to need to create another layer mask. So what we're going to do is we're going to invert our selection there. We're going to press on our brush tool. We're going to make our brush nice and large, maybe a little bit harsher. Make sure we turn back our flow back up to 100% and make sure our opacity is 100%. And we're just going to paint in the iris area here. Lovely. Brilliant. And then what we can do is just simply move the uh, hue and saturation around until you're happy with the result. Now, as you can see, it's coming up with a few of these kind of odd little specks of other colors popping in there. And that's because these eyes are predominantly blue, but it's got little bits of hazel in them. So what we need to do is you just need to have a look. So you can see this is a kind of a yellowy golden color. So all we need to do is need to go to our yellow part of our presets and we could just move that. And as you can see, that is changing color as so. Uh, and then it's predominantly changed it and it's worked quite nice. But if you want a more of a consistent color throughout the entire iris, what we can do is we can use the brush tool and we're gonna actually paint in some color. So I'll show you how to do that now. This is step two. So we're gonna take uh, delete our hue and saturation layer. And then what we want to do is we want to uh, create a new layer and we're going to be calling this one color. And then we want to select uh, a color that we'd like. So I think what we'll do is we'll maybe select uh, maybe a bright blue like so. And then what we want to do is we want to just basically paint in the area of the eye that we want to colour. So we're going to go along here, we're going to go along here, like so. Brilliant. So once we've done that, as you can see, it's not working at the moment. So what we're going to need to do is change the blending mode. So we want to go to our blending mode and we want to go down to color. And as you can see, it is create a real consistent color throughout. Now you might find that the, um, the saturation is very, very bright. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna click on this and we're just going to go to our saturation of hue and saturation and we're just going to decrease the saturation slightly. We're just gonna lock our transparent pixels and then we're just gonna repaint in like that, like so. Lovely. So as you can see, we've changed the color of the eye and it's worked really nicely there. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do the same to the left eye. Paint that in, like so. Lovely. So they're really coming together, but we've got one more step that we need to do to really make the eyes pop. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase the amount of reflection in the eye and add a little bit of a reflection of our own. So what we're going to do is go to the, uh, to the right eye again, and as you can see, we've got a reflection part, and this is where the light is completely reflecting off of the kind of water of the eye. And what we're going to do is really going to want to enhance this. So again, we're going to go to a new layer, and we're just going to recall this one, highlights. Lovely. So we've got this highlights. What we're going to want to do is we're going to go to, go to our... Uh, uh, color picker, we want to select completely white. We want to go to our brush tool, so that's B on the keyboard, or go to the left hand side here. And we just want to hover over and just highlight that area with white, like so. And then we just want to go to the other side of the eye, and again, we just want to do it on this side. So we're going to go like so. Lovely. And then what we're going to do is we can just add in a, a nice soft spot there and there. Lovely, perfect. But it's not looking too well at the moment. So again, guys, we're gonna to have to change the blending mode. So we're gonna to go to our uh, blending mode options and we're gonna drop down to screen. But it's still not working because we only want it to affect on the bright areas. So we're gonna to need to tell, tell Photoshop to blend this particular photo or blend this particular color just into the highlights. So what we can do is we can just double click on here and what it'll do is it'll pop up with our layer styling box. And the moment you do that, we want to go and have a look and see where it says blend if. So as you can see, we've got this layer here, we want to just to affect the underlying layers. So if we just want to move this icon here, as you can see, it is removing all of that blending area from all of the dark areas, but keeping it in the white areas. But as you can see, it's looking all pixelated. So what we're gonna to have to do is we're just going to press Alt on our keyboard, and as you can see, we can just move that out of the way. So as you can see, it's working really nicely there. Lovely. 
And if we turn that off and on again, as you can see, it's really brought out the reflection in the eye. So if we uh, zoom out all the way, and then if we just press Alt and on the bottom layer, turns it off and on again. And as you see, we have really enhanced the eyes and really made them pop in your photos. And there we go, guys. So that's how you can sharpen, add contrast, texturize and color the eyes in Photoshop 2020. Brilliant. And there we go, guys. So that's how you can really enhance the eyes by sharpening them, increasing their contrast, adding texture and changing the color of the eyes to really make them pop in your photos. Again, I've got a um, previous video all about how to enhance portraits by enhancing skin and, and really making those photos pop in your, uh, in your photos. So make sure to go to the link in the description to learn more about that. We even got a free asset that you can download. Again, guys, if you want to like, comment and subscribe to my channel, it really does help my channel grow. Also, if you want to hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of my latest content. But until next time, guys, keep creative.